Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and all-around snappy dresser, meteorologist DT from Weatherist, your commander of chaos, colonel of confusion, and captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and lots to talk about. We'll start out first with taking a look at uh, our El Nino and La Nina conditions. And uh, you can see that uh, this is the Australian latest prediction as of uh, November, October 9th. And notice the green line here. It gets down to, see the, uh, the beginning of the blue line there? That is technically uh, where you have uh, the beginning of La Nina. So this is a, the scale on the left-hand side here is in centigrade. So 0. Point minus 0. 0.8, it's about a little more than one, about one degree of Fahrenheit. So that's where La Nina begins. And you can see the Australians get it into a, a weak La Nina, around one, not quite minus 1.2 in December. And then look what happens. It rapidly begins to fall apart in January, February, and March. Um, and this would imply a, a more favorable second half of the winter, but we'll see. This is the uh, um, um, European October prediction. Um, and again, the black line, that was September. And you can see the blue there again at minus zero, uh, 0 0.5. You can see again, basic La Nina there with the blue shading. The red line uh, doesn't, is the new October projection. That's the solid red line. And the red spaghetti lines, those are the different possible outcomes. Remember, in the European ensemble, there's 50 different members of the European ensemble. So if you look at the thin red lines, there's 50 different versions of it. But all of them, the solid black line is the mean. And you can see that the model does not get it down to minus 1.0 centigrade, around 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So it's a little weaker here than it is on the Australian model. Uh, and then again, look what happens when you get to January. It begins to really fall apart January, February, and March. Now the CFS is a little different. The CFS is colder than most of the other models, getting it down from minus 1.5 in December, but it does begin to weaken a bit in January, then rapidly weakens in February, March, and April. So that by the time we get to the March, the La Nina is almost essentially over. So this is an outlier. This is probably the coldest solution of any of the common models that I've seen. I think this is way too cold. The CFS loves to go extreme with that. So. Um, you know, unless some other model goes that cold, I just, I, I can't support that solution. All right, let's talk about the recent conditions here in the U.S. So this is the uh, Wednesday morning weather map from the uh, big early season snowstorm um, in Colorado, Wyoming, northern Utah, eastern Idaho, and southern uh, Montana. There's the big monster system here, quite impressive. Finally getting a nice big system for uh, early in the autumn. And then you can see on uh, Wednesday afternoon, it tracks right into South Dakota, um, the snow is continuing at this point still in Wyoming, but it's changing over to rain uh, in the western Dakotas. So pretty nice system. This is the snowfall of mats. Mostly this is elevation snow. And you can see you know, the orange colors there. That's 8 to 12 inches. A lot of those in the mountain areas. And then lower elevations, you know, 2, 3, 4 inches of snow. And you can see they did get a little bit of snow there in the Black Hills of South Dakota in the elevated area over up to allegedly up to 18 inches. I'm not sure if that's right, but that's what the report showed. And then you can see here, uh, this was the uh, snowfall map also from NWS, a uh, little different projections here. And you can see that the snowfall map, again, if you look at the red blobs, that's 18 inches in some areas, and the orange is 12 to 18. So it's quite good snow in the elevated areas in eastern Wyoming, southern Montana, the western Black Hills there of South Dakota, um, south, I guess that's near the Idaho border in southern Montana. Um, so pretty good snowstorm there for the first season. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here. This is the upper air map. This is why we had that big storm. We talked about this last week. We mentioned that there was going to be an early season significant snowstorm for the central Rockies. That's exactly what happened. So we can see the big trough here over the western United States and this huge ridge on our blocking ridge in northeastern Canada, southern Greenland. You have an upper low here. So this is kind of a Rex block because you have the upper low directly underneath the ridge. So that's a Rex block. And this is, of course, a strong ridge, and it's going to uh, put up cause quite a bit of warm weather for the next couple of days along the east coast before the cold front arrives look at the temperatures so far for the past week look how warm it has been relative to normal and remember folks um, as we get into october for everybody essentially east of the rockies 
the max and min temperatures fall about one degree every two days. So, you know, it's really, you get temperatures around 80, 82 degrees. That's really quite above normal in the middle of October. And this is the U.S., different projections, same sort of thing. I get in the Rockies, on the West Coast, behind the trough, it's been, they're getting rain. Yay! They've been getting snow. Yay! A lot of precipitation in the mountains. They really, really need it, so this is good. And they're getting cooler temperatures there as well. So they could really use that break of nice weather, of a cold and wet weather, which for them is great weather, I should say. Now, um, if we take a look at um, <clears throat> the uh, rainfall for the past seven days, I think I can enlarge this, but no, actually, I don't think I can on this map. Um, let me see here. Might be able, here we go. You can see that there's a pretty significant rainfall here um, over the past seven days with these systems coming out of the Rockies with two different systems. Uh, one uh, over the weekend and the one in the Rockies. Now, a lot of this precipitation fell in the drought areas of Missouri and Kansas, uh, the Dakotas, and northern Minnesota. Uh, if you look in the uh, Dakotas, see that purple blob? That's six, seven inches of rain the past week. A lot of areas in eastern Oklahoma, Texas, northwest Missouri, Illinois, widespread two to five inch rains there. Now, along the east coast, it's been pretty dry. Ohio Valley's been dry. The deep south has been dry. Some showers in Georgia and North Carolina from that coastal system earlier in the week. Okay, so we, let me uh, shrink this back down to where it should be. There we go. And then go on. And you can see now, this is the pattern coming up here, 48 hours. So the trough finally begins to move east, the one on the west coast. It's a very big trough, a strong cold front. It moves underneath the block in uh, northeastern Canada. See that? And uh, this is a, a pretty nice trough here. There's another one coming in the Gulf of Alaska. See that coming in the Pacific Northwest. So systems are coming in pretty fast. Here's the cold front. It comes through Saturday afternoon from west to east. It's off the coast by Saturday evening, except for New England. Pretty good amount of rain with the system in Virginia, some portions of central and eastern northern Virginia, uh, Maryland, uh, central and eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. Uh, pretty nice rain with the system. Some thunderstorms as well. Look at the gusty winds here Saturday night coming in behind the front. That's pretty nice. And then this is a Sunday morning again, still gusty winds, northwest winds, 15 to 20, 25 miles an hour, making it feel very autumn here on Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a nice day. Gonna, a lot of places are going to stay in the 60s. Overnight lows are going to get into the 30s and low to mid 40s. And a lot of places in the Mid Atlantic and New England, um, you know, for the first time in quite a while. Okay, now the trough on Sunday night, Monday morning is over New England, very cold air. You see the high is coming down. You can see the northwest flow bringing the cold air in. So it's very impressive. But here's the next system already on the west coast and another one in the Gulf of Alaska. And there's your block. You see the big red area by Greenland? There's your blocking pattern. Now, several days ago, a couple days ago, the models were showing that this next piece of energy was going to produce a storm in the Midwest that was going to jump to the coast and produce a coastal storm or a nor'easter on October 22nd and the 23rd. But the new data doesn't do that. Um, it still has the system there, but it's much weaker. This is the upper low map. This is the 12Z uh, Thursday European model. And I highlighted the features. See the black circle there? There's an upper low there and a neutrally tilted trough. And there's another upper low here in southeastern Canada. Now, if this is the middle of winter, I'm looking at this and I'm saying someone's going to get a snowstorm in the, in the northeastern United States. Uh, the big, you have a huge 50-50 low over southeastern Canada, the big block there, negative NAO, nice ridge on the west coast. But what happens is the European model shears the system apart. You see here, you got three different pieces of energy here. So none of them can become the big piece of energy. Now, this is what the 12Z run of the European is showing. Not the other models aren't showing that. We still have the big ridge over the Rockies. See that very, very big ridge all the way up to the Arctic Circle and a huge block over Greenland and, a, you know, an upper low underneath it again. So that's a Rex block. This again, this is screaming snowstorm. If this is December, January, February, March, that's what this this is screaming snowstorm. OK, um, now the European ensemble, very different. They are jumping on one significant low and on the East Coast and showing a coastal storm. So this versus that. See everything sheared apart here. The ensemble, it's not sheared apart. It's got a nice low on the mid-Atlantic coast and potentially a coastal storm. There's, you can see the huge block of northeastern Canada, the negative NAO right there, Baffin Island, and the big trough on the west coast. Uh, now, the GFS, the 18s, the 12s you run, I should say, does have a wave on the southern end of the front here when it comes through, but that's about it. So we'll see. I suspect if this is true, the operational models are going to show a much bigger system here for October 22nd, 23rd. But we'll see.
Okay, now beyond that, uh, look what happened. This is 294 hours out. This is October 26th. So we have a trough off the northeast coast, uh, you know, off of southeast Canada there. Um, and then we have the big ridge, a blocking ridge over Hudson's Bay up at Baffin Island. And then we have the trough coming down from Alaska, sending this energy into California, then tracking in a west to east direction across the southern United States. So uh, this has potential. And sure enough, October 29th, there's some sort a significant low in the southern stream and a nice block here in Hudson's Bay, Canada. So this is obviously still a rainstorm, but we are getting some activity here on the east coast. So October 29th has the potential for being a significant storm. And the operational GFS is showing that the 28th, the 29th, a nice storm on the east coast with big high pressure over Lake Superior. And it's got a little bit of snow in Ontario, but that's about it. It's mostly a rainstorm. And beyond that, this is October 9th. This is the new extended European Ensemble. Just came out Thursday evening. Strong negative NEO blocking here. Very clearly a, a nice big trough in the eastern United States. Perhaps it's neg negatively tilted. A ridge on the west coast. You know, this is October 9th. This could be, you know, maybe snow in the mountains or the Great Lakes. Maybe. We'll see. Might just be rain. But again, it's nice to see the blocking. It's nice to see the trough on the east coast. If you like, winter, you know, active weather on the east coast if you like this what this means for the winter we'll see it might mean something it might not we don't know yet and if we look at the uh, mjo uh here uh this is the australian model you can clearly see uh the new run takes it through the neutral circle here's the neutral circle then november 1st and 2nd uh it is in phase one you see that in phase one right here now what that means going into november we're in phase one well this is phase one and you can see that um, it's got a pretty nice trough here in the western United States and a ridge over southeastern Canada, but we have a negative anomaly over the Bahamas, so that's possible coastal storm of some type. Notice a strong blocking here in the Arctic region. That's a strong Arctic oscillation. That's indicative of a pattern flip. Now this is phase eight, okay? So if it stays in phase eight, you still have a big trough on the west coast and a ridge in Canada. That's still a stormy pattern for western United States, but it looks like it wants to go into phase eight. Uh, uh, phase one in the end of October, but we'll see. Anyway, that's the presentation. That's this week in weather. Uh, again, we'll be doing another one usually every Wednesday. This one was a little delayed, uh, but we're doing it again next Wednesday and every Wednesday from now on. So be sure to check into the YouTube channel, go to the website, go to the Twitter page, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, you've learned something and we'll see how the winter progresses. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and over on the Facebook page.